All right, I'm gonna go over some IV pump calculations now. So number six has an order for a thousand milliliters of some kind of IV fluid to infuse over six hours. What is the pump rate in milliliters per hour? And we want to round to the nearest whole number. Again, if you don't pay attention to that and you don't round, then that's gonna be a problem. You're gonna get it wrong. So this one's pretty easy. So a thousand milliliters is going to infuse over six hours. So if we just do this division, we'll get the rate in milliliters per hour. So turn on my calculator here. 1,000 divided by six equals 166.66666 on and on. But again, we're rounding to the nearest whole number. So that would be 167 milliliters per hour. That was not too bad, especially after the last one, right? Okay, we'll pick it up with um, question seven next. All right, number seven deals with another IV pump calculation. In this scenario, our pump is running at 125 milliliters per hour, and the question asks us, how many hours will it take for 500 milliliters to infuse? So we have 500 milliliters, and we are infusing at 125 milliliters in one hour. So we can cross off our milliliters and we'll, be en we'll end up with hours as our unit of measure, which is what it's asking for here in the question. So if I do this calculation, I end up with four hours. So at this rate, it will take four hours for 500 milliliters of fluid to infuse into the patient. So that is number seven. We'll pick it up with number eight next. All right, number eight, deals with drop factor calculations. So in this problem, we have an order to infuse 500 milliliters of normal saline over a four hour period of time. And in this scenario, we don't have an Alaris IV pump, okay? What we have is a drop factor of 12 GTT, that means drops per milliliter, as far as the tubing set up, and we want to know how many drops per minute should be delivered to the patient. So again, this is a scenario where we don't have an IV pump and we have to manually adjust um, the IV bag and the tubing to deliver a certain drop factor. So let's work through this problem. So we want 500 milliliters infused over four hours. And we know our drop factor is 12 drops per one milliliter. So our milliliters cross off here and we have drops per hour, but we want drops per minute. So we're gonna have to say one hour equals 60 minutes to allow us to cross off our hours. And here we can see when we multiply this out and divide that we'll end up with drops per minute. So if you do that, you end up with 25 drops per minute, okay? So again, we're taking the order and we're just using converting factors to get to the, um, the unit of measure that is requested in the problem, in this case, drops per minute. So that's number eight. Hopefully that was helpful. And we've got one more, number nine next. All right, this is the last problem I'm gonna go over in this video. It's number nine, and this is a problem that deals with calculating how much IV fluids a patient is getting in total when they're receiving multiple infusions. So in this problem, we're told that the patient is getting normal saline infused at 50 milliliters an hour in one of their IVs, and then in another IV, they're getting an IV antibiotic infused every eight hours, and this particular antibiotic is in 100 milliliters of fluid. And then they're getting a second IV antibiotic every 12 hours, and this antibiotic is in 50 milliliters of fluid. And so the problem asks, how much IV fluids will the patient get in 24 hours? So we're gonna handle each of these separately to figure out how much they're getting of each of these within a 24 hour period of time, and then add those together. 
So for the normal saline, we know that the patient is getting it at 50 milliliters for each hour. So if we multiply times 24 hours, cross off our hours, that will give us how many milliliters they're gonna get over a 24 hour period of time. So if we do that math, we end up with 1200 milliliters. Next, let's handle the um, next antibiotic. So with that antibiotic, they're going to be getting 100 milliliters of fluid every eight hours. So over a 24 hour period of time, we're gonna be getting 300 milliliters. Again, the hours cross off here and we're left with milliliters. And then for the second antibiotic, we're gonna be getting 50 milliliters of fluid every 12 hours. And again, if we multiply that times 24 hours, we're gonna end up with 100 milliliters. So when we're calculating how much they get total as far as fluids within a 24 hour period, we just add 1200 to 300, which is 1500 plus another 100 is 1600 milliliters total. Okay, so that is it. We got through all nine practice questions. I tried to pick a variety of questions that I've seen previously that I think are important for you to know. However, if I have missed a certain type of problem or there's another type of problem you want me to work through, then definitely leave that in the comments. I'm happy to make another video or two or, or more, as many as you know are needed so that you guys can really understand how to do these math questions because I really don't want you to miss any of these math questions on your test because on your nursing school exams, there will always be these random questions that hardly any nursing student gets right. So we need to save our points for those kind of random crazy questions. We need to try to get all our math questions right, all our ABG interpretation questions right, so that we save our points for those really difficult questions that are hard for anyone to get right. So. Hope this video series has been helpful. Again, if you have additional problems or additional questions you want me to work through, leave them in the comments. And thanks so much for watching.